Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest on the line, Nikki Jim. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Welcome, What's sir. Up, gang? Good, man. Everything good, man. Trying to keep safe, you know what I'm saying? Trying not to go crazy here with my girl. You know, I just got a. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because I'm getting married in a year. Woo! And 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 and, and I, I'm doing quarantine with my girl. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying not to, not to quarantine is not a good moment to start with your girl because you, you got to stick with her for 24 hours. <laughs> How is that going? Because usually you're on the road, you're on tour, you're doing movies, but now you're <laughs> home all the time. How is that going? Nah, it's doing good. It's doing good. Actually, I told I told them. If I had to do it again, I'll definitely pick her, man. Thank goodness. At least you have a boat to escape to if you need to. I do, I do, I do. I'm blessed. Yeah, they said <laughs> that, uh, you know, they had to make sure that you could possibly do it because you might be on your boat and they wasn't sure if you were going to be too far out and not be able to get good service. Yeah, I was I was worried about that, so I just came home because it's the first time. He, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of the show and uh, I'm saying this is my first time on the show. I got to do it right, man. How long, fact, have you been, how long have you been engaged? Uh... Since uh, Valentine's Day. Okay. Oh, of this year? Of this year? Yeah. Wow. What have you learned new about your uh, soon-to-be wife since y'all been quarantined together? Um, what did I learn? That's a good question, man. Well, I learned that um, sometimes you need your space. <laughs> 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 so you're about, oh, go, you're about to go on the boat by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you need your space, you know, because uh, when I when I started with her, we was we was touring a lot, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So it, it's different when you're touring, you know, mm -hmm. you're going around, you traveling all these places, but you know, you 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 with your girl like every day, nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. It could be a little bit dangerous for a relationship, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I bet. Did you have a lot of questions after watching El Ganador on Netflix? Um. Well, you know, before she saw El Ganador, I, I told her my whole life, you know, my, my, I told her everything, everything I went through and all that. So she kind of knew already what was going on before she saw it. Because you were a real ladies man. And I'm sure for any woman, she has to see that and be like, damn, you was banging your lawyer. You was banging people. People told you not to. You weren't staying away from women. It was like a weakness for you. Yeah, I mean, you know, she know my life. I mean, I was, I was, I was, I was doing all that every day, different girls and all that. But I felt empty. You know what I'm saying? It was something about that. Every time I was with a girl, I felt like every bad energy of this girl that I was, I was messing with, it was staying with me. Mm -hmm. That's right. I don't understand how to explain it, but it, it was did. something that yeah, it's it wasn't the transfer of energy. Exactly. Yeah. It wasn't feeling. It wasn't feeling good. It was a lonely life, and then. I was I was in the moment that I was like I'm having all this money, all this success, and I don't have somebody you know to to you know to to enjoy it with you know and 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 all these girls and all that is not working. So right, I met I met this girl. She's an athlete. She's from Louisiana. She uh she she she, she uh she's a professional. She's smart. She's beautiful. She could play basketball like a beast. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it can't be sexier than that. So you say you're getting married next year, right? Yeah. So being that you, you know, you went through your whole phase early on, you got all that out your system, so you're not going to miss anything during this quarantine for the year? You didn't have no last plans before you got married? I mean, you mean the messing around? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> nah, like I said, I did it so much. Mm -hmm. So much. You know what I'm saying? That it comes to a point that, you know, I... Every time I think about that, I think about that, that, that darkness. And I right. think about that, uh, that cold life. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't want this for my life. You know, I, I don't need this. I've been singing for 25 years. Yes, I wasn't wow. famous in the, in the world for 25 years. I was famous in my country in Puerto Rico. But that's like being famous for you in the world because that's the only world you know. Right. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So I've been famous for a long time in my, in my life. And I've been around. And uh, so I've been... I've been I've been in and out, you know what I'm saying? I was a drug addict. I did it all. There's nothing I haven't done in this life. You know Let's I mean? start from the beginning. How did you get into the music industry? How did you start rapping and performing? Um, I was born in Lawrence, Massachusetts. I don't know if you know about Lawrence. Yes, yep. yep. Uh, and 
I, st I remember there was a lot of, when I was like eight years old, there was a lot of talent shows about hip hop talent shows in, in high schools and stuff. And um, I used to go just to check them out. And I loved, I, I loved what I was seeing. They said LL Cool J was your, your, one of your, your, your idols and your influences as a kid. Yeah, back in yeah, back in the '80s, I wanted to be like him. You know what I'm saying? Without, without the muscles, so I ain't got his muscles. <laughs> got you. I went to Puerto Rico uh, when I was 10 years old. My dad, they caught my dad with 25 kilos of cocaine. Okay, that's what I like to hear. And, <laughs> and, instead of my dad, uh, uh, you know, he he paid bail. He, he got out on bail instead of going back. He took us as a fugitive to Puerto Rico, and he raised me. And he was trying, he was raising me as a fugitive in Puerto Rico because my mom was a drag a drug addict and she couldn't take care of me. So my dad, you know, he, 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 he was doing drugs, but he wasn't that crazy. So he, he knew he could uh, take care of us in that situation. And uh, I went to Puerto Rico and I saw for the first time what reggae music was, dancehall music and all that. Back in 92, you know, Shabba Ranks and, and Buju Bantan and all Minnie this. Man, yep. mm -hmm. Minnie Man, all this vibe. And I said, I want this. Because back in the 80s in the States, the way people dance and, and, and do, it was a little bit separated. You know what I'm saying? They, they didn't do that, 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 that Caribbean vibe where, you know, you're <laughs> grinding up on a girl. Yes. So I, said, I, mm -hmm. I fell in love with this. And I said, I want to do this for my life. And uh, I started packing groceries at a store. And I started rhyming in, 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 in English. Uh, it's crazy because my first language was English, but now I speak better Spanish than English because I've been living in the Spanish world for 20 years. Um, so I started rhyming and this girl from a record label saw me and they signed me like in a week. Mm -hmm. They signed me in a record label called MP Records. I did my first album and uh, imagine I was 12 years old doing a, an album. Creativity wise, it wasn't really too good, but the DJs loved what I, what I did and I started doing a lot of mixtapes and that's when I started uh, working with Daddy Yankee. Daddy Yankee was the king of mixtapes in those days. And um, that's how it started. Why didn't you sell dope? I did it. Okay, you did, okay. <laughs> yeah, he said, I did, I did. So your dad, <laughs> you, you, I, I, your dad put you on or? Uh, no, nah, not really, man. I did it just to survive, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I even did it, it's funny because I even did it, it uh, I went to Cresta 193rd in Fordham Road, by Fordham Road in New York, and I did it with Mango, the day, Mango Pina days. I was there on the block trying to survive because I had problems. They was trying to kill me and Daddy Yankee because they, because my, one of our best friends, he was in the... Tito. Yeah, he was in the, he was in the streets messing around and uh, they killed them. So they, they said we was next. So we had to go hide in New York because this guy had a 666 on his forehead. You know what I'm saying? This guy wow. was crazy. The guy wanted to kill us. So uh, I was trying to survive. So I, I told the guy, yo, man, give me a spot. You know what I'm saying? I try, I'm trying to make money. I'm trying to survive. So I did that until I could make some money. And uh, we all got, you know, made money enough to go back to Puerto Rico, get us some straps and take care of each other and get back to this music again. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy is that looking back on everything, you think about all the things you went through at such a young age, right? Like your mom being an addict and then your dad, you know, being involved in the drug game and then seeing one of your best friends discovering his body and all of those things that you had to deal with and then having to flee to the Bronx to escape somebody trying to kill you. That's a lot to go through at such a young age. And we see you being like addicted to Percocets and all of that to kind of try to numb the pain. When did you realize this is not normal for a child to have to see these things? I mean, this is all I knew since I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? I saw my parents, you know the faces they make when, that was the crack era. You know what I'm saying? And you know the faces they make when they do crack. Imagine right. you're five years old in your house and, you know, and that's all I saw. That was my life. So that could, you know, that could, that could mess you up in the head and, and, and that's the normal life for us. So I was doing drugs. I was in the music with, I was doing music in, in Puerto Rico and I started out with weed when I was like 11 years old. And from there, from weed, I went to Coke and from Coke, I went to everything. And uh, the perks I did it when I was already like famous in, like in Puerto Rico, uh, Perkos is like a big drug in Puerto Rico. It's something that they like even more than anything else. I don't know in the States, but like, like, cause I, I what, what I know, it was like more like a white people drug in the States and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. in Puerto Rico, people love that shit and they, they, they did it a lot. So I got hooked on that. I was doing 
30, 40 pills a day. God yeah. damn, you lucky you alive, bro. I am lucky I'm alive, man. 30, 40 pills a day. And uh, I don't know, man. I mean, it came to a moment, you know, to, re to tell you, the, it's a long story to make it short. I was just tired of, 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 of everything failing and everything being bad. I said, I, I need to break these chains. You know what I'm saying? My mom was a drug addict. My dad was a drug addict. You know, my uncle died of AIDS because he, he, he injected himself with heroin with uh, somebody else's uh, dirty needle. Dirty needle, and, and 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 he died in my face. I saw him die. You know what I'm saying? I said I gotta change this. You know, and uh, I went to church one day, and I got on my knees and I started. You know, I, I started crying. I cried like for a half an hour. You know what I'm saying? For a half an hour, and I let everything get out. I let every, I let everything go, and I went to uh, Colombia. And it's crazy how people are like, well, you got clean in Colombia, <laughs> the country where there's everything. All that you know, good ass so cocaine I'm, in Colombia. That pure huh? shit. It's all that good ass pure cocaine in Colombia. <laughs> well, that's not all Colombia. Colombia has a lot of beautiful culture, a lot of beautiful people, but it, I know it has a lot of people think that, uh, you know, a lot of people think that that's the only thing that you could see in Colombia. So, but when I went to Colombia, I saw the good side of Colombia. I saw the love they gave me. They made me, they gave me all that love that I needed to uh, conquer the world, you know? And uh, I just got cleaned and, um, I lost weight. I was almost 300 pounds. Because when you take perks, you don't really like, you're not the skinny drug addict. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, you take perks, you eat a lot. And it messes up your metabolism too, right? Doesn't it? Exactly. So imagine being a drug addict and fat. <laughs> it's like a crazy combination. So I got skinny. I lost like 100 pounds and started feeling good about myself. And then, you know, broke broke the the the, the addiction. And uh, from there, started... Uh, finding my music in Colombia. Colombia, I started like from zero, from being a famous singer in Puerto Rico and having all the success and losing everything and, and people forgetting who I was. I went to Colombia, I saw Colombia had 65 million people, more than 65 million people. I said, if I have a national hit in this country, I could probably bounce around all over the world and have a lot of views, let me, see, let me try it. And that's what I did. I did five number one national hits in the country and I made so much views, so many million, uh, millions of views that I started jumping all around the world and then I did worldwide hits. Right. Listen, I want to go back to something real quick. Uh, it was a story that you told about when you was in the street. So you and Daddy Yankee, y'all come to New York, y'all get y'all money up, y'all get the scraps, y'all go back to Puerto Rico. Did y'all kill the guy with the 666 on his forehead? No, we did. We know. <laughs> no, we did. No, we was lucky that they somebody took care somebody of Somebody else. You know what I'm saying? And not for us. I mean, he had problems with a lot of people in Puerto Rico and, uh, you know, that's the way it worked. Now, Charlamagne, mean, if he did, do you was, think he would be like, yes? Do you think well, he was, bet, if he did, do well, you think he'd be like, yes? Well, here's the me? thing. He told 75% of the story, so I was like, well, wait a minute. The way it sounded, yeah, no, 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 it no, sounded no, no, like no. you, you well, were like, what I'm telling you, what I'm telling you already came out on the series, so it's yeah. not like, um, gotcha. but, but, uh, but the thing is, the thing is, uh, I was like, we was, we was just, we was just taking care of each other. We was trying to survive. We wasn't, we wasn't trying to kill people, you know what I'm saying? We, right. we, uh, I was just stupid. I, I, I can say I was stupid in a lot of ways, but at the same time, I, inside of me was just a good kid trying to do music and, and do the right thing. And, you know? um, under some difficult circumstances, but you did go to jail for shooting somebody. Yeah, I did. I did. That, that was a soup for me. Right. <laughs> you, now, why'd you shoot somebody for those who didn't see the documentary yet? Uh, well, uh, we was at a club. I can't really talk about, about it. So much. If you see the series, you'll see that you'll see when 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 a gun goes off. But uh, and that's it, and that's it. The gun did just that went happen? Off. Did that happen in the states or did that happen in Puerto Rico? That happened Columbia? in Puerto Rico. That happened in Puerto Rico. I got three years. Uh, they gave me six years for attempted murder, but 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 I came out in three. And mm -hmm. uh, well, I, well, I could say that there was a lot of worse people than me that they needed to put them in the jails, and they were letting out. Well, that wasn't really too bad. You know? Now, how did you meet Will Smith? I see you as Will Smith got a great relationship. How did you and Will Smith get, get together? Um, well, the thing is, my manager is, is, is best friends with uh, Will Smith's manager. Charlie Mack? Uh, no, not Charlie Mack. Miguel? Miguel, okay. I don't know why yeah, I he's, Charlie he's in New York. He's from New York, yeah. Uh -huh. So, so uh, the thing is that uh, he one time, when I came out with this, with this song, X with J. Bobby, was a big hit. 
and uh, he told him, yo, can you do a challenge? Like, can you dance with the song? He did it, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, me being a big fan of Will Smith, who isn't, I went crazy. And um, so I felt blessed, you know, and they called me uh, for the World Cup to do the World Cup song. Yeah. And I said, I'll do it if, if Will Smith could be in it. This is me not even talking to Will Smith about this. <laughs> right. But I know for some reason, Will Smith loved, he loved music, you know what I'm saying? So I know, I, I know if I told him if he wanted to do the World Cup song with me, he was going to do it no matter, just to have it on his, on his list of things that he, he's done. So right. I went to Will, I'm like, yo, Will, you want to do the World, World Cup song? And he's like, hell yeah, let's do it. So we did the World Cup, we went to Russia, and uh, that's how we, uh, we started the relationship. And then he saw how cool I was, and I was telling him that I was acting and I, and I wanted to act. And he was telling me he was doing bad boys. And obviously, you know, me being a guy, me being a guy almost 40 years old, you know how we, we love bad boys. Mm -hmm. I asked him if, if, if I could be a part of the movie. He's like, yo, bro, do the casting. And if you do good, the part's yours. So I went to LA. I did the casting in front of these three ladies that had the poker face, you know? And I thought I didn't get it, but I did get it. You know, it, it went good. And, um, that's how it is. That this is my second movie. I did. Uh, I did Triple X with Vin Diesel too. The mm -hmm. third part. It was my first cameo that I did, and I thought I was gonna do a cameo in in, in Bad Boys as well. But they gave me almost to half of the movie. Yeah, the real part. Yeah, the part yeah. part. Like you had yeah, a they real give, actor they part. Gave me a real, they gave me a real part. Made me look badass. Do stunts and shit. Cool. Question. Yeah. Question, Nikki. Um, you you talked about the decline in your career earlier. Do you think that was directly associated with the beef with Daddy Yankee? I could say yes, a lot, because really? Daddy Yankee, because the respect that people have for Daddy Yankee was insane. And I did a show, I did a song dissing him, because mm -hmm. I felt that he shot at me in the song. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, after that, Yankee comes out with the song La Gasolina. Yes. You know, yeah, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Right. So he went, bah! and imagine, imagine being the guy that this Daddy Yankee <laughs> or the Gasolina coming out. That messed up my career for a lot. I mean, that was a stupid move, an ignorant move for my part. Are y'all yeah. cool now? Oh, hell yeah. We real good. Real good. How, how, did, good? how did y'all squash that? How, how did, did you have to come back and be like, my bad? Or how did y'all squash it? You know what? I knew, we, I, I told him I was sorry and everything. We said, it's funny. This is a crazy story. When he was in the peak of his career, um, I got on a plane first class, and I think the people from American Airlines, they knew this, mm -hmm. and they knew Yankee was gonna be in it, and they knew we had like a little beef going on, and they put us on us on. They put to y'all together. They put us next to each other, and we sat down. Wow. And we talked. Mm -hmm. we, talked on, we talked on the plane, and he was like, yo, bro, look, let's, let's do this. Uh, Music-wise, you know what I'm saying? Music-wise right now, business-wise, we don't have to prove people that we good, you know what I'm saying? But me and you, we squashed the beef, squashed the beef, so we was okay, you know what I'm saying? But people didn't know it. Right. You know what I'm saying? People didn't know it. And yeah. I, and, and I, in my mentality, and I wanted to do music with Yankee, and I wanted to fix uh, everything, but my mentality, I said, you know what I gotta do? It's easy to say you're sorry when you messed up, and, you, and you're broke, and you're not doing good, and your career is... Right. Is shitty and he's doing so good. So I said, let me let me get my shit together. Let me get my career my career good. Let me work hard. And then when I go back and tell him I'm sorry, I know he's gonna believe me because I don't need nothing. And that's gotcha. exactly what happened. So, right. How'd y'all get to that point where y'all was beefing to begin with? Uh it was it's, I was the drugs, man, had me so stupid and I was messing up so much. I thought I I thought he, he, he needed to support me more, but he did so much. Yeah, right. he did. When you he, watch the docuseries, you're like, oh my God, how yeah, is Daddy Yankee so even much. He did putting so much, up with this? I was, I was with that stupid keeping it real mentality, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. he was trying to be this successful singer and have a, 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 a nice career. He was already over the street thing, you know what I'm saying? Because he was already like, you know, he, he, he was always a leader. And, and I wasn't thinking like a leader. I was thinking like a stupid follower of people in the streets. And he knew about the street thing because he was always, he's from the streets too. Okay. So he was like, yo, Nikki, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll try to help you so much, but I can't be with you anymore, bro. Like, you're going to get me in trouble. You know what I'm saying? I had so many troubles and so many people would go to Yankee and say, yo, bro, I'm going to kill your boy. I'm going to kill your boy. I'm going to kill your boy. Mm -hmm. You know Man. what I'm saying? 
he had to pay money to get me out of things. So I was just stupid, bro. I was stupid, 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 ignorant. And that's what drugs do, bro. It, right. it, it, it messes up your judgment. It messes up your, your head. And, and, and if you have five cheerleaders next to you with the same stupid mentality, that's what's going to happen. And Yankee was smarter than that. Word. Now, you're also very open about the fact that you had to battle and deal with depression. So did you officially go to, like, therapy to find that out? Or is that something you just know that I was? I think going to Columbia helped me a lot. Because if, if, I don't know if y'all went, if y'all ever been to Colombia, Medellin, Colombia. Y'all got to go, man. Mm -hmm. The way people are over there, the love they give you, and, and, and the way it is, man, it, it's insane. You know what I'm saying? People just think about Colombia as beautiful girls and, and cocaine and, 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 the, and the cocaine and that. They wrong, bro. <laughs> Colombia has so much culture to give, so much love to give. And when, sometimes when you're in a mess, messed up situation, moving to another place helps you a lot, especially a place where they give you so much love. So I, the therapy I needed and then, and then all that that I needed, Colombia gave that to me. And with that love that they gave me, I conquered the world, man. It was it, from there everything was beautiful. And I, and I had a different mentality about myself. You could even tell when I started doing videos on Instagram, always with a smile, always, if I, I remember from a guy that had millions and had all the money in, 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 in Puerto Rico when he was on his top, I was posting videos of me buying a Mazda 6 and being happy about it. Mm -hmm. And people saw that and like, yo, this guy's like, he's happy because he just bought a little car. You know what I'm saying? This guy used to have it all. He, he should be right now not even posting this until he makes it again. You know what I'm saying, and 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 has money to buy all this all this like Bentleys or whatever you want to call, it, you know, and uh, so yeah, man, that that's I could say that that Columbia gave me all that. Do you think people necessarily respected your genre of music? I'm starting to see it more and more and more, but it, for a long time it seems like they didn't necessarily respect the genre. No, they I didn't think they respected it at all. Actually, you know what I'm saying. They didn't respect it at all, and uh, it's 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 okay. It's like any any type of genre that that you know starts from ground zero. You know, it, it takes time. You know, and I've been doing this since 1992. You know, and I remember when uh, I remember when it had like a little phase in 2000 when Yankee came out with the gasolina. There were people in the states were messing with it. You had Lil John, you had mm -hmm. Puff Daddy doing stuff right. with Yankee. A little bit, a little bit of rappers getting into the game, but it kind of died after that. You know, and uh, I guess, you know, us, be, the Spanish community being so supportive, and you know the views we make, you know what I'm saying? It's because the Spanish community is, we support each other a lot. Absolutely. It's insane. Um, that helps, helped us a lot and gave us a big platform. And, and look, look, right now you got Bad Bunny making the numbers he making. You know what I'm saying? You got Osuna making the numbers he making. I mean, it's, it's, it's big numbers, you know? It's like, it's, it's almost, it's almost, Numbers that would do like a Drake or something like that, you know, and being a Spanish. I mean, you would expect the American uh, singer to make those numbers, but not a Spanish singer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Nikki, speaking of Spanish, uh, we have a, a, a board up, another member of the Breakfast Club. He's also a DJ. His name is DJ Dramos. He loves you. He thinks you're hot. And he wants to ask you a question or, or two. Right, Dramos. <laughs> What's up, bro? How you doing? What's up, man? I, so I think speaking of Latin music and, and the respect you feel like it doesn't get, there's obviously like the language barrier for, for a lot of people. They don't understand it. But I think the arguments I get into with people at radio uh, is that it's not necessarily about understanding what they're saying. It's just the feeling. Like Latin music, there's a feeling to it. And you guys, you know, have a, 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 you know, a fan base that is just not Spanish speaking. You guys have a, a huge fan base that just speaks English, you know, and really you know, messes with you guys just because they, they love the music. I do shows in Israel. I do right. shows in, in I do shows in, in Russia, and and these people don't speak nothing nothing Spanish. Mm -hmm. It's about the music. I mean, come on, man. The state's been listening to reggae dancehall music, and we don't yes. know what they. Who no bono no I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's the same <laughs> you know what? I was thinking that you have to feel like you are truly blessed just because of the chances that you've gotten, like even getting that call from Enrique Iglesias. What was that like for you, for you to be able to get on a number one song when you were feeling like, I don't know, you know, where my career is going? What was that conversation like? Well, you know, th this is the thing. Uh, me being a guy that came from drugs and was weighing 300 pounds in his, in his career was in, in the floor to, to come back up again. 
you know what I'm saying? And, and, and do a hit like El Perdón, that that's the song that I did with uh, Enrique Iglesias and to get a Grammy and to be number one on the, sh on the Billboard shot for 28 weeks. Mm -hmm. you know, that's insane. That's huge. That's huge. And, and, and Enrique gave me that pop status in the Spanish, in the Spanish world, obviously not in the American uh, world, but in the Spanish world, Enrique is like an icon. He's, he, he's, he's, he's a pop icon. He, he has a lot of hits. So for me coming from Port uh, Colombia and, and doing a lot of little reggaeton hits and going from that to a hit like El Perdón, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 it's huge to me. It, it's, 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 it, it's what made my career solid. Dramos, you, know? you got another question? Yeah, I mean, I'm curious. We're seeing a lot of the, a lot of like unity amongst Latinos, you know, throughout the world now. But when you, you went to Colombia, was it like that for artists? Because obviously now you have the Jay Balvin's, you know, he looks at Puerto Rico like his second home, you know, and him and Bad Bunny collaborating all the time. We're seeing artists from all over the Latin community collaborating. Was it like that at the time, though, when you went to Colombia that people were really supporting one another or were they just kind of really messing with artists from their specific country? Uh, you mean artists from Colombia? Was no. When it look, Col Colombians love Puerto Rican, uh, love Puerto Ricans because they they love uh, our culture and our music. So every time a Puerto Rican went to Colombia, even if he wasn't like, even if he was on top level, right, the love was always there. You know what I'm saying? So they always gave us love. Always gave us love. Like J Balvin uh, was already like he was saying. He, he, J Balvin was the daddy Yankee of Colombia when mm -hmm. I went to Colombia and. He's, he knew that I was in Colombia. He ran to the hotel where I was staying to tell me that he loved me and I was his idol and I was broke, fat. <laughs> I didn't have nothing, you know what I'm saying? And, and the dude gave me love because they were listening to our music for years now, for, decade, for a decade or, or more. So every Colombian, the mentality of every Colombian of our Puerto Ricans is always respect and love because they love our music and that's the way it's been. Can I ask one more? You guys mind? Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Drum. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I mean, obviously the, the old school culture of the reggaeton is a lot of macho stuff, right? You know, and now we're seeing guys like Bad Bunny kind of breaking those, a lot of those stereotypes, wearing things like dresses and kind of pushing gender norms and, and talking about a lot of political and, and society issues. You're an OG in this game. How, how do you kind of feel looking at that, seeing how far he's kind of pushing? Because he does get a lot of flack for kind of being this weirdo, quote unquote, in the, the Latin space. And I respect him, man. I mean, he 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 got the guts to do it, bro. I mean, I don't think I look good in that dress. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely he, sent Jamos that video because I was like, "What is going on here?" And he had to break it down and explain yeah, it to nah, me. Yeah, no, 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 no. I mean, I, I I when I saw it, when I saw it, I'm sorry, I said I saw it. <laughs> when I saw <laughs> it, I said he's a genius. Mm. I know it was gonna work, you know what I'm saying? And and the guy and then the guy had his girl right there, you know what I'm saying? And he kissed right. his girl with the dress on, you know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. can tell me. He's smart, man. He's yeah. very smart. Yeah, I never, I never, wait, I never thought about that because you know, in the hip hop community, you know, people see that and they be like, "Oh, he's gay or whatever." How is it in the Latin community when it comes to stuff like that? Hey, that was like that. We had that mentality years ago. You know what I'm saying? That's that keeping it real gangster mentality back in the early 2000s. But not today, man. That's that's old, bro. That's not with that mentality. I mean, I mean, it takes a man to like do whatever he wants to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? And not care, you know, what people say. So you're I not going to do that in the next video. That's not going to be you in the next video. No, no, it's just that I'm not saying, I'm not saying that, that I just think I don't look so good doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what What's your relationship with your mom like now? Oh, it's perfect, man. It's perfect. Oh, well, right now she's in a situation that, uh, cause, well, that's another story. She, she, uh, they deported her to the, to, to, uh, to the Dominican uh, Republic years ago, cause she had a she 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 had a problem with a guy, and um, she can't be here in the states with me. So I gotta see her every time I go to the uh, Dominican Republic, or when I go to my house in Colombia, I fly mm -hmm. over there. So right now I can't be with her as much, but we talk every single day, oh. and uh, she leaves me these long ass messages <laughs> at five o'clock in the morning, and I can't answer right away, cause you know you wake up at five o'clock in the morning, can't read, but. Uh, I mean, the love is there, and uh, she's making up for everything. I'm just, I'm just blessed to have her. And everything I did in the music was to be famous so I could see her again. I lost my mom for almost 20 years, and I got her back, so I won. You know what I'm saying? I didn't win because I, I got these Grammys, and I got the, uh, all these, uh, sold all these records and all that. 
Uh, I got my, I bought my mom a house. I got her back. Sure. I bought my dad a house. I bought my sister. Those, those are the real, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. The real blessings in life. So Nikki, speaking of blessings, is your uh, fiance gonna come out of uh, this quarantine pregnant? Uh, nah, man, not yet, bro. I'm gonna enjoy that body for a couple of years. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> so you making the essential run for condoms, huh? Yeah, man. No, nah, you just pull out. Uh, that doesn't always <laughs> work. That's how, that's how it started for me, and I got five. That's how it started for me, I got five. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's hard, but you got pull out, baby. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us, Nikki Jam, man. We yeah. appreciate you and good Nikki, luck with where, everything. where's the wedding gonna be? Uh, we're thinking about Malibu mm -hmm. in LA, you know what I'm saying? So y'all invite if y'all want to go. Oh, yes. be, yeah, I mean, if y'all want to go, you know what I'm saying? I'm just being, I know Charlamagne not going to go over there. like, I ain't going over there. I know that wedding's going to be amazing. I like hey, a good man. wedding. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you guys, you guys are awesome. And I, I'm, I'm blessed to be here with you guys and you guys interviewing me. I feel, I feel now I feel that I made it. God bless, we got, man. We got to, we got to, we got to do it in the studio over some drinks, man. Next time you're in New York in this quarantine, I'm, shit, let up. I'm ready, bro. And anytime you, you guys in Miami, holler at me. Let me know, bro. Right, right, we hey, got a place to stay now. You me, heard him, right? Me. You heard him. I'm gonna know. do a business with you right here because I'm a hustler. Envy. I'm gonna hook you up with that singer that you got. You gonna hook me up on this real estate business, all right? <laughs> Done. Enough said. Uh, all right. Yeah. But now, you guys, now, make sure you check out El Gana Daughter on Netflix right now. It's available now. So you can watch the whole series. Yeah, mm -hmm. every time we come to Miami, I need a place to stay. I we vote you, for the crib. I got you, bro. Whatever right, you want, it. but you gotta hook me up with this real estate, bro. Cause that friend you got, got like five hundred homes. What is this, bro? We yeah. got you. That's done. That's There's a done. lot of promises flying back and forth here, guys. Let's see. That's done. All right. Hold on. <laughs> I think I think Dramos got a final question. You got you look like you want to say something, Dramos. Dramos yeah. must go to Miami Dramos too. Said, I, 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 yeah. He must say I love you. I want I want to come to a wedding too, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Los Angeles, man, the album, is it coming? Yeah, man. I mean, you and Daddy you know, reuniting. We definitely going to do something like six songs, something nice. like that. We're talking about that. I mean, you know, Daddy Yankee has a big career. I got a big career. We do, I'm working on movies and stuff. He's working mm -hmm. on a new album. As soon as we all finish that, we go back to it. And, and this whole quarantine thing right now, I don't think we got shows until 2021 right, right. now. Yeah, you, know? you got to relax, I got, right? I got bills for almost $150,000 a month. I got to know <laughs> what's going to be the next move. <laughs> <laughs> did you, what did Daddy, what did Daddy Yankee say about the diss song? Did, what this song though? The one you did, like what years he, ago. Did, yeah, what did he ever like? Did y'all ever discuss it? Did he uh, say anything? Come on, man! No? Come on, man! He acted like a big brother. He acted like, man, come on, Nikki, man, you can do. Better. Don't do that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that, bro. You you can't do that to your big brother, bro. <laughs> nah, man. You know it was a hard moment. You know what I'm saying? But he, he he's he's that's why he's a leader. He started this, man. He's the he's the he's the he's the JC of of our music. You know what I'm okay. saying? And, uh, I respect him a lot, and uh, today I'm here because of him, because I saw the discipline that he has, and uh, I'm here because of him, man. You know, I was stupid in, in a time, and when you're stupid, you see the results. Simple okay. as that. Enough said. So, so the project y'all doing, y'all haven't recorded anything for it yet? No, not yet, because we, we, did, we did a single called Muevelo. It was his last song. But uh, as soon as this quarantine stuff finished, we all go back to the studio, and we'll do, come out with it the Kangri album and, and, you know, make people remember back the early 2000s. All right. Well, thank you for joining us again, brother. We appreciate you. And it's Nikki Jam. It's the appreciate Breakfast Club. You, Good morning. All love. God bless. Love, love. bro.